Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. If you don't already know who it is, it's the one and only, the true Alex J. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some goddamn zombies. So there's news that's come out from the Mail Online and they're talking about a company over in America where basically they're gonna be making zombies. Uh, let me get into this. This is a real story, I swear to God, couldn't make this up. This is absolutely crazy. I'm even gonna leave a link in the description so that you guys can see the source that I got this from because it seems so incomprehensible. So here we go. So this is an exclusive. They said the man who wants to bring the brain dead back to life. Scientists whose life's work will be used by a US company that's ready to start trials to reanimate living uh, cadavers, if that's how you pronounce it, in Latin America. Uh, they've already got volunteers. So basically what they're saying is they're going to take these volunteers from Latin America and then bring them back to life. I'm not joking. So if they've been brain dead, they're going to be able to do this thing and bring these people back. There's quite a lot of questions that I have about this whole thing, but let me get into more of the details. This story gets more and more crazy. It says, uh, Dr. Sergi uh, Paylayan became obsessed with studying and reversing the aging process after seeing the funeral of his young, pretty neighbor in Georgia. Okay, I understand it. You know, it's not nice seeing people die. I understand all of a sudden trying to play God and bring them back. That I don't really understand, but let's keep going. So his company BioQuirk works with biological extracts called BioQuanties, which incorporates material from other uh, re regenerative species such as frogs. Uh, BioQuanties will be used in conjunction with stem cells, laser, and nerve stimulants in an effort to bring living cadavers back to life. That's scary. Let's get more into it. There's quite a few questions that I have. One is how long after your death can you do this? Because if you know anything about the brain, if it's turned off for long enough, if you get brought back, you'll have irreversible brain damage. And as time goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse, right? So I'm curious, you know, how far gone have the people got to be before you bring them back? Also, I'm curious about the volunteers because how do you, do you just wait for them to die? Or have they like signed up and said, you know what, kill me, then try and bring me back. Like, what, what kind of contract is that? Because if it's to do with age and they have to wait for them to naturally die and then try and bring them back, and they've got these volunteers, how long are you going to be waiting? What happens if this person lives, like, I don't know, another 30 years or 40 years? Or are they getting really old, vulnerable people? And again, that brings even more questions. If they're old and vulnerable, should they be allowed to sign this? Is this just like a desperate attempt to bring themselves back? And if you were dying, would you really want to be brought back? Um, and again, we don't know if they're going to be brought back healthy and all good or if they're going to come back and have problems. There's so many things that I've got questions about this. So let me keep going. It says, um, Sergi was only 14 years old when he was horrified by the death of his young, attractive neighbor in Georgia. I have a weird feeling this is one of the, it's like an origin story. You know when you watch the X-Men and everything, it's like an origin story. Like there's a girl that he's attracted to, she passes away and he's like, I will bring people back to life. That's what this feels like. So let me keep on going. So he's 14, he sees his neighbor die, and he's like, I'm not having this. Uh, as was the local Soviet custom at the time, her open coffin was carried through the streets to the sound of music as a shocked teenage Sergi looked on, confronted for the first time with the issue of his own mortality. It sparked a lifelong obsession with aging and how to reverse it. Yeah, but he's not reversing it. He's not focused on aging anymore. Now instead he's thinking about bringing people back from the dead, which is a bit different. You know, if you're prolonging life, that's cool. I'm down with that. But it appears that he's no longer trying to do that. And instead, he's just trying to, you know, reanimate corpses. What happened? Oh, because I was listening to a really weird argument. Now, uh, you know, if you're spiritual and, you know, that's the kind of world that you rock, there was quite a few questions that the spiritual people had, which is, if you, if you die and your soul goes on, that means you're an empty vessel. So when you get brought back, would it be a demon that possesses you? Um, so that was one thing that the, these people were hearing. And the other one was, that, you know, what happens if you were, you know, you were in a good place and then you get dragged back down to your body. I mean, there's so many questions. So let me keep going. Um, it says, now standing in neat Florida laboratory that looks more like a dentist's office, the 66-year-old scientist, just how many years is that? That's a lot of years, that, that's 50 something years. That's a lot of years, dedication, okay? I, I'll give him that, I'll give him that. He had dedication, he had persistence. Fair play to you for that one. 
Um, is there's now standing in uh, his laboratory, it looks like a dentist's office, he's 66 years old, my goodness, is explaining how a lifetime of research has accumulated in a purified extract he calls bioquantities, uh, combinatorial biologics incorporating other species such as frogs, and in the future, sharks that he believes is the key to curing diseases and even death. Again, very curious. Um, it just, it, the whole thing kind of seems weird. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it gets even more crazy because basically this guy said, I don't want to test it on animals. I don't know why he doesn't want to test it on animals. He just wants to test it straight on humans. That, again, brought a lot of questions to me of why? Why do you want to go straight to humans? Why do you not want to, you know, test it on animals first? Why are you, why are you going to go straight to a human? Again, there's so many questions that I have, and, and if you know the answer, feel free to leave it below. If you've got any questions for him, leave it below. Maybe I'll try and get in contact with him, I don't know. So let's keep going. It says, when injected into humans, he claims the bioquantities find their way to diseased or damaged cells and help restore them to a healthier state. The company Dr. Palin founded, BioQuirk, is part of a broader project called Reanima. Just think about that. That's the name. Do you know, do you know when you watch those futuristic movies and they've got weird over-the-top exaggerated names that pretty much tells you what they do, like um, Bring Back to Life Corp. <laughs> like, his, his, his is called Reanima, which is basically stating for reanimation, which is just short of basically saying zombie. If you, if you look at... Well, oh, my goodness. Right, anyway, let's keep going. His company, which is exploring the potential of cutting-edge biomedical technology for human neuroregeneration and neuroreanimation... He is on the International Advisory Board of Reanima, which, he, uh, which is already preparing to conduct experimental, experimental treatments in Latin America of living... What? My goodness. Of living cadavers, uh, patients who have experimented complete and irreversible loss of brain function or, or brain death. So basically if they... Yeah... That confused me because I thought it was saying that he was doing it on living people. It's not. It's people that have had irreversible loss of brain function or brain dead. So they are definitely dead or declared dead at the very least. And then this guy, Frankenstein, is going to bring him back. Um, it says the procedure involves harvesting stem cells from the patient's own blood and injecting them back into their body, injecting bioquantities into the patient's spinal cord. That sounds painful and performing 15 days of laser and median nerve stimulation, monitoring the patient using MRI scans. Again, it all sounds extremely high tech, sounds very complicated, 15 days, and this thing's gonna be going on. You know, when this person comes back, are they gonna be able to live forever? It's so confusing, because if you get brought back, does that mean that you're all good now? Like, you, you come back more healthy than before, or is it you come back and you're still basically in the same state, so you're gonna probably die again? recently. I'm very confused by this whole process, to be honest. So the initial goal is to restart the body's ability to unaided pump the heart and breathe. No one is expecting the treatment to immediately reanimate the patient so that they're jumping out of the bed, but the project aims to lay the groundwork for future further developments that can enhance levels of consciousness and recovery. And this guy, like I put him here, right, um, I, don't know, I don't know what to say about the whole thing. It, it's, it's scary. The whole thing's scary. It, it raises so many questions. Is this ethical, for one? Because it, legally he can do it, right? Legally he can do it. I'm just saying, ethically, do you think this is a good idea? Um, spiritually, is this a good idea? I'm not the most religious person in the world, but I know there's a few people out there that are, and you know, I'm curious how they feel about this whole thing. What happens if this becomes a regular thing? Like, you die, and you can just tick a box and say, yeah, if I die, just bring me back. Like, what kind of insurance is that? Um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very curious what happened to insurance policies. Yeah, just sign this one and, uh, you know, if you die, if you quirk it, we'll bring you back. Um, says, um, so this is where it gets a bit more complicated. Basically, he tried to do these trials over in India, but when the Council of Medical Research and Planning, uh, when they found out um, in, that they were trying to do this in India, India was like, no, 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 you don't do this. Don't do it in my country, okay? Don't play with that hoodoo, voodoo nonsense, okay? Do it in somewhere else. So, <laughs> so that's what happened. Basically, they found out that he was trying to do it in India. They were like, no. So they cut him out. So then he's gone to Latin America. And I find it really bizarre that he's going to very poor countries where he's trying to do this. All right, again, 
there might be a monetary incentive for these people to agree to this, which I'm sure there is, and it also allows for a corruption. All right? I'm not saying he's doing it, I'm just saying it allows for that means, and um, clearly in these kind of countries. And if you don't believe me, um, uh, India was just recently, uh, sorry, Pakistan was in trouble recently, um, and obviously they're, they're fairly close. Um, Pakistan was in a lot of trouble um, because they had a president that almost got elected, and then he got in a lot of trouble because he basically can't explain where his money's come from because it's come from some pretty shady sources. Um, so, you know, Asia in, in a whole has got a lot of problems with corruption, and Latin America also has a lot of problems with corruption. So it could be a reason why he's targeting these countries. But what he's done is he's basically managed to get these volunteers in a particular place, and he won't tell anyone where it is because obviously human rights activists will show up and they'll cause a bit of mayhem. So he's managed to keep all of that quiet. Again, it raises the question of why are you targeting these poor countries? I'm guessing it's because they're poor and it's very easy to manipulate people over there. Um, and also, I'm guessing, again, bribery. Again, I'm not saying that he is or isn't doing that. I'm just saying, you know, it's a possibility. It's really crazy. There's, there's so much going on. Um, it says, their specific ideas of brain death regeneration tend to be laughed off by much of the mainstream science. Uh, Dr. Palin's uh, face falls when he acknowledges that he has sent out articles hundreds of times but he's rarely been published and no one has congratulated what he considers to be a massive discovery that could change the way we view treatment of disease. So he's basically saying, look, he's tried you know, to speak to the community and show them, look, this is what I've done. Everyone keeps laughing at it. No one's really taking it any seriously. But he's managed to get these volunteers in this country to actually allow them to do this to themselves. So again, I'm very curious to if it works and if it does work, is it something that we should allow? Is this something that you would want? I'm very, very curious on your opinion. If you could be brought back from the dead, would you want to be brought back? Um, if you, Because I know there's some loved ones, maybe a loved one passes away and you're like, oh, I really wish I didn't lose them, but you know, is it for the better? And, and the other side of it as well is overpopulation. That's already a problem. What happens if we've got the ability to bring pe people back from the dead, right? That That's also <laughs> it's not going to help the overpopulation problem. I, again, I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to get your opinion. Um, leave a comment below. Tell me what it is that you're thinking at the moment. Make sure to follow me on my social media, facebook.com forward slash the true Alex J. You can also find me on twitter.com forward slash anything success. You can also find me on instagram.com forward slash Alex J020. Again, make sure to subscribe, turn the notifications on to get your daily entrepreneurial news. If you've got anything that you want me to cover, feel free to drop it below. And if you have a business that you're working on right now and you want help exploding the amount of progress that your company's doing, you want to get more leads, you want to get more sales, make sure to fill out the form below. There's in the description you can get your first consultation free. Look forward to speaking to you guys again soon, but in the meantime,